What's going on guys? My name is Lars and today I'm going to be bringing to you guys a deck profile on zombies, more specifically zombie world control with Doom King Baldurok. You use Doom King Baldurok in this deck to be able to negate your opponent's monster effects or to be able to banish them from the field. Now, zombie world as a card essentially kind of seems like an odd one if you're not familiar with it. It just turns everything on the field into zombie type monsters and in the graveyard. But what people don't understand is that it does have very certain interactions that it's able to essentially negate and stop your opponent. You can do something like Ash Blossom, because Ash Blossom is a zombie, Baldurok can trigger his effect to be able to banish cards on the field. So that interaction is very cool. You can do something like Rivalry of Warlords to essentially stop your opponent from having any multiple monsters on the field. There are so many cool interactions that I'm going to go into with you guys in this video, and then you guys can try it out for yourself. If you've never tried it before, I highly encourage you to do it. If you're looking for something really fun to play with, something to really piss off your friends this is the deck for you guys if you are enjoying the content that i am creating and producing please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to my channel i really appreciate it thank you guys so much now without further ado let's get into the deck profile okay guys so here's the new deck profile here for zombies uh you can see i do have a little bit of a new setup here i just have a webcam so you guys can actually see me so i got way i can interact with you guys a little bit more uh, and forgive me i do have a little bit of a cold right now so if i sound a little funny <clears throat> that would be why uh, i also got a new screen recorder my old one actually limited me to 15 minutes so i usually had to rush through the extra inside deck on my old videos so it was a kind of a pain in the butt but now i actually can uh do it for as long as i want i can go into as much detail as I want and then I can uh, give you guys the full scope of everything that I'm talking about so let's get it started here with the uh, monster lineup we start off with two copies of Doom King Baldur uh, Balladrock uh, he's the boss monster of the deck uh, he's able to revive himself if he ever goes to the graveyard so during any standby phase he'll revive himself from the graveyard as long as there is a field spell on the field and I, I emphasize that so if your opponent has any field spell on the field uh, 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 other than like Necro Valley you'll be able to revive him. You don't have to have Zombie World on the field for you to be able to revive him. So that's awesome, just having a monster every standby phase constantly coming back. Uh, and then his effect, so when a Zombie-type monster activates its effect, you can activate to either negate that effect or to banish one monster on the field or in the graveyard. So you can see right there that there's a lot of interaction with it, and that's why you need the Zombie Worlds. That's The Zombie World turns everything on the field and in the graveyard into Zombie-type monsters. So. I uh, he's a two of in the deck because you don't want to see him in your opening hand, but you can easily get him out, and I'll show you. Uh, I'll tell you obviously just how the deck works, how easy it is to get him, you know, into your graveyard, and to get him out of your hand. Uh, but yeah, definitely two of three is too much. It's too cloggy. Uh, but yeah, moving on, we have the danger engine. I run six dangers. Uh, we're limited now just to one Nessie just for our search, uh, and then two copies of Bigfoot. Now there's a reason I run this. Uh, there is. Uh, you can do like a small, it's a little small rank eight engine. So you're able to like pull out Bigfoot with uh, Jackalope and then being able to go into rank eight plays uh, with your Balladrock to be able to summon out your Dingirsu uh, for your protection. So that's why the Bigfoot's in there. Also it's just the destruction effect is really nice. But dangers just allow you to pretty much unclog your hand because this deck can get a little bricky. Um, but that's why you have the dangers in here. So it runs six dangers in here. So the two Bigfoot here for the destruction in the rank eight place, and then the Jackalopes in here to be able to special summon from the deck to get your Bigfoot or whatever you're looking for. It really doesn't matter, but that's why they're in there. Uh, and then one Snick, just an extra body on board as well. Uh, again, just this, this is just a really nice draw engine. The dangers are just so versatile. They're just so nice with this deck too, just to be able to draw your cards and everything. Um, and then one copy of Vampire for line. Uh, Freline is really awesome, so when your opponent does declare an attack, you can special summon her from your hand, and you can manipulate your zombie monster's attacks uh, to can raise them up to 3,000 points, So, which is awesome, and it's not once per turn, and that's also very important. You don't, it's, it's Since it's a not one, uh, once per turn effect, a lot of people make that mistake, so when they're attacking, they're like, okay, you can only use it once. It's not a hard once per turn effect. You can use it more than once, So, but you're just paying your life points for it. So. You just got to be a little bit careful, but she's really nice. It's a good one of in the deck. You don't need more than that. Um, it's also searchable with your glow up bloom. So yeah, just a really good card. Uh, next, three copies. This is standard. Three copies of Shirinui Solitaire. This is able to get your Uni Zombie out of the deck onto the field. He's probably the best starter. Best, uh, pretty much besides Uni Zombie, best normal summon in the deck. Just able. You want to get your Uni Zombie out on the field as fast as possible because this is how you're going to get your play started. So yeah, three copies of Shirinui Solitaire. Uh, next we have the the 
best card in the deck is you and a zombie being able to discard monsters from your hand or to be able to send a zombie monster from your deck to the graveyard most likely depending on your situation you're going to be sending off your ne necroworld banshee uh or your glow up bloom and you're going to be sending these your banshee is the one that when she hits the graveyard you can banish her to activate uh, a zombie world from your deck so definitely want that you definitely want to have two of these for sure again you don't want more than that but it's just great to be able to send her and be able to activate your zombie world immediately you need to get that on board as fast as possible um but yeah she also protects your zombie world as well if you do happen to have her on the field uh next we do with the glow bloom uh this one when he hits the graveyard if zombie world is on the field you're able to special summon a level five zombie or higher zombie from the deck so this is how you're going to get uh out your baller rock and how you can also get your for line uh but Obviously, first turn play, you definitely want to get your ball of rock out on the field. He's also a level one tuner. Uh, you can also summon him out uh, with your Shiranui. That's definitely, again, just a two of. There's a lot of two ofs in this deck, uh, if you haven't noticed by now. Uh, next, we run two copies of Mizuki. Pretty self-explanatory, being able to banish him to revive a zombie out of the graveyard. Uh, really, really useful. Definitely two of three. I think it's a little cloggy for me personally. I found two to be just fine. Um, not really much else to be said about that. Uh, and next we run two copies of Gozuki. This card is so clutch, absolutely clutch. Being able to send a monster, uh, a zombie type monster from your deck to the graveyard. He's, he's also one of a, a really good normal summon uh, to be able to just, you know, send either your Necrowall Banshee, your Bloom, Mizuki, it really doesn't matter. Whatever you need, uh, he, he's able to just grab that resource and dump it into the graveyard. The graveyard essentially is your second hand in this deck. So. Yeah, definite two of in there as well. Uh, next, we run three copies of Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, it's the most versatile hand trap in the game. But just the specific interaction, if you have Baldurok and Zombie World on the field and you discard Ash Blossom to, you know, stop a, a search or whatever you want to do with it, if Baldurok's on the field, you can trigger its effect to be able to banish one of your opponent's monsters. So it kind of just adds that extra bit of utility. Ash Blossom, to me, is an absolute staple in this deck at this point, just because it has such good interactions with this deck. So it just adds that extra bit of utility with Baldurok to be able to banish cards like on your opponent's side of the field. Ghost Ogre is another good one. It's a shame it's psychic, but either way, Ghost Ogre is just a really good versatile hand trap as well. Just the destruction effect. You pretty much just trying to kill all your opponent's resources, just negating their resources, banishing your resources, pretty much to stop your opponent from being able to make plays. Just at the out resourcing them is it's just insane in this deck. Uh, but yeah, three Ghost Ogre. Uh, you can also substitute this for like Droll and Lockbird as well. I should probably add Droll and Lockbird into the side deck, thinking about it for the Spiral matchup as well. So just keep that in mind as well, just while we're moving here through the deck profile. Uh, next, three copies of Super Poly. You can main deck this. This card is amazing in this deck. Like, not that it's not amazing in any deck, but this one in particular, I love it in. Because if Zombie World is on the field, you can use Super Poly to be able to grab your uh, Dr uh, Draco Nether Soul Dragon. Uh, uh, because all it requires is two zombie type monsters so you can since zombie world is making everything a zombie there you go you have uh, something your opponent can't stop to be able to just use their monsters to go into draco nether soul this is just awesome i, I love this card so much I, there is almost a never a game as long as you find it you're going to be using it but just just that for that interaction alone it doesn't matter about types or anything else as long as it's as long as you have zombie world you're, you're taking their monsters from them it's just it's excellent uh three copies of instant fusion here uh definitely you have your mud dragon here uh, your Millennium Eyes are strict, especially if you're going first turn, if your opponent's use, uh, using like a lot of hand traps or anything like that. This is just great to be able to make sure that your plays go through. And then Thousand Eyes, obviously, to be able to clear opponent's monster off the board as well. I think that's a 3 of for sure. Uh, next, the, the definite 3 of is the Zombie World, just turning. This is what the deck's based around, Zombie World and Baldurok. Uh, so you have Zombie World on the field, everything becomes Zombie type, and uh, everything in the graveyard as well. So. A lot of people forget the graveyard effect, like being able to banish a monster from the graveyard. That can come in very handy, to, especially to another graveyard-reliant deck. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much Zombie World in a nutshell. Uh, next, just one copy of Foolish Burial. Pretty self-explanatory, being able to send off one of your monsters from the deck to the graveyard. This is, the graveyard is your second hand, so definite one of. And then one for one, this is to grab out your Glow Up Bloom, and you can use that, uh, you can use your Glow Up Bloom to go into like a Link Karibo, uh, so that way you can get it into the graveyard to be able to either like special summon out your Baldurok, or to, I mean, at worst case scenario, to perform a search uh, for your Baldurok or your Feline. So, 
That's why the one for one is in there. Uh, moving on here to the extra deck, super poly target, you got your starving venom. Uh, Thousand Eyes are strict, it's pretty self-explanatory, just stealing a body off your opponent's side of the field. Millennium Eyes there to make sure your plays are going through, and if for some reason they try to negate it with like a monster or something, you could steal it. Uh, really good card. Uh, the Mud Dragon against a super poly target. Also, it's level four, so that can come, uh, come up because you have a few tuners here in the deck as well. Um, not too much to be said about it. Another instant fusion target. Uh, your Drake, uh, Drake, uh, Dragon Necro Nether Soul. I can't talk about this card. Jeez. Uh, but yeah, so he's uh, just, again, he's your super poly target as well. It's just a big body. He does have one downside, and is that you don't destroy the monsters by battle. However, you do produce a token if that monster is still face up on the field, uh, equal to that monster's level and attack uh, to be special summon to your side of the field. So he does have some upsides with that. Um, but yeah, just a 3,000 body. He's not a bad monster by any means. I think he's actually pretty good. He just comes in so clutch at so many opportunities. Just that super poly is, is so broken. Uh, Next, the one of Link Rebo. This is just to send off your glow bloom because uh, you need to get it off the field. You need to get this card into the graveyard. So that's why you do have the Link Rebo. Uh, the one of Vampire Sucker. This is going to be part of your first turn play. Pretty much, you're going to be trying to get out your Unizami to be able to dump and to be able to get your uh, Baldurak onto the field. You're going to link two off into your Vampire Sucker. And then during the standby phase of your opponent's turn, you're going to special summon the Baldurak. And once the Baldurak is special summoned while his Sucker is on the field, you draw a card. So it's just great just being able to, to go and get get more resources out of the deck. It's such a good card. Um, this is another one of, this is the Avenger at Savior. During damage calculation, if this card battles an opponent's monster, you can send one zombie type monster from the deck to the graveyard. Um, <clears throat> and that opponent's monster loses attack equal to the level of that monster. So it, it does have a decent effect, um, but yeah, it's like if, if you're really like, pretty much if your sucker's gone at that point, I mean, he's, he's a good link to, to go into. Um, Next up, we have the Synchros. We have the one uh, Dawn Dragster. Dawn Dragster is just a negate on field. That's really not too much to be said about it, but it's just really good. Then you have the one copy here of Omega. Omega is absolutely awesome in this deck. Being able to return uh, cards that were banished to the graveyard to be able to reuse them again. So it's just that recycling, just to be able to get like your Mizuki back or whatever you need. Uh, again, the graveyard is a second hand and he just helps facilitate that. So Omega is definitely a one of. Next we have the uh, Red Eyes Zombie Necro Dragon. This guy builds power. He's, he's, if you're not familiar with him, he, do, he gains 100 attack and defense for each zombie type monster on the field and in the graveyards. So you can see this guy can get really, really big, especially like in the mid to late game. So he's definitely a good one of, just a level seven. It's really not hard to meet that requirement because you have the use zombie, which you can manipulate his level and everything else. Um, just really, really awesome. Uh, you don't go into him that much, but again, he can become a massive beater. Um, definitely one of. And then the Black Rose one, you just need to hit a hard reset and blow up the field. Really not too much to be said about that. Uh, next, uh, this is, uh, well, we have Dingirsu. Dingirsu just being able to provide protection and also to be able to have that uh, non-targeting, non-destruction removal. So you can remove your opponent's cards off the field and it's just great. It's just easy rank eight. Um, that's why we have the two Bigfoots and then the two Balder Rocks. So definitely awesome. Dink Gears is a really powerful exceed monster. I, I, I did used to run Borload Savage. I just personally don't prefer because I never really went into it. Now I have uh, more of a reason to because Balder Rock's always on the field. And then Jackalope will pull out the Bigfoot or the Bigfoot will summon himself on the hand. So it's really easy to get him. It's just awesome. And then you just, you know, detach your Balder Rock. Balder Rock will come back next turn. It's just all of this interaction is just so good, so powerful. Uh, Dugaris just uh, just needs two level fours. I, I don't go into him this uh, too much, but it's just to be able to go, get more resources uh, from the deck. Uh, you can also double an attack of a monster as well. Uh, he's pretty good. Just getting uh, just getting more resources. So if you have like dangers, you can just keep going through uh, your deck, getting more resources out of it. Uh, then the Abyss Dweller, <laughs> just to turn off the graveyard for your opponent. Uh, really good card. It's one of the best level fours or rank fours, I should say, in the game. Um, next, we go on to the side deck here. Now, you keep in mind, I didn't have Droll and Lockbird in here. I, I would recommend probably having that. It's kind of an iffy situation because uh, it's hard to tell whether we should main deck draw and lock. Now, if you're like a YCS, I would recommend having a main deck draw and lock probably over the Ghost Ogre. Um, but just in this instance, you can utilize the side deck to your liking, of course, to what you think would be best going you know, forward if you decided to take this to a very serious uh, matchup. 
Uh, now moving on to the side deck, we have uh, three copies of raw sphere mode. Uh, sphere mode is just the best kaiju in the game to me. Just being able to tribute all three of your opponent's monsters, it does eat your normal summon, so just keep that in mind. Uh, so when you, but if you need to go against spiral or any any combo heavy deck that builds massive boards, whether it's pendulums or whether it's heroes, you know you can tribute over all of that and then just give them a massive chicken nugget. So definite three up to me. I like this. But I personally prefer this over Nibiru. Nibiru is a little situational, whereas this just three monsters on the on your opponent's side of the field. That's incredibly easy for them to meet. Um, definitely, I think Ross Fear Mode is just the better choice all around. Uh, next three Twin Twisters, pretty self-explanatory. This is your back row removal. Discarding is really not a big deal. The, again, the graveyard is a second hand. Three copies of evenly matched. This one is so good. Uh, again, the side deck staple as far as I'm concerned, just being able to level the playing field, so to speak. Um, not too much to be said about it. Uh, now this is one of my favorite cards, Eradicator Epidemic Virus. Just being able to call spell or trap and then your opponent pretty much has to reveal what they're drawing and then it's a spell or trap depending on what deck or matchup you have. This could completely tear them to pieces and absolutely ruin their whole day, just ruin the duel for them, and, and they just probably will lose from there. So really good card. I put, I definitely think it's a good three of in the deck. Um, not too much else to be said about. So easy to get out, you know, with Balderock. Um, definitely, definitely a good card. Uh, and then lastly, we have the Robbery of Warlords. Now, I want to explain the interaction here because a lot of people don't seem to understand the interaction this card has. I, I get, like, a lot of questions online about it where... Uh, like if I do play this card or if I do side deck it in matches and I activate it, they're just like why can't I summon this monster from the hand the problem is is that when you do have zombie world on the field all monsters are zombies now rivalry of warlords each player can only control one type of monster so if they're not playing in a zombie deck now they can't summon their warriors or their spellcasters from the hand because everything on the field is a zombie. You can't control any other type of monster. So that's why this card is so good in this deck because everything in here is a zombie, aside from the danger engine, but everything in here is a zombie. So now you can summon as much as you want and until your opponent can shut this off, they can't do anything else. So that's why this card is so good in this deck. Definitely I would have a three of it. It's just, it's a, such a good floodgate going up against combo decks. Um, not too much else to be said about it. But uh, yeah guys, that's it here. Guys, that's gonna do it for this deck profile. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and I'll see you next time. Later.